Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to theCUBE's live coverage of Informatica World. We are wrapping up the day, our final segment of three days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage here in the Mandalay Bay Convention Center. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, sitting alongside my co-host and analyst, Rob Stretche. Rob, it has been a great show. It has, and I, I think what's really brought the power to this show has been the customers and the energy and the sharing that they've done with each other as there's little round tables over here where they're sitting down, sharing knowledge with each other and coming on here and sharing knowledge indeed, as well. Indeed, indeed they are. Well, with that, I'd like to welcome our last guests of our show. We have Dr. Anish Agarwal, Head of Data Analytics at Dr. Reddy's uh, Laboratories. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you very much for the invite. And we have Joseph Sullivan at Informatica. Thank you so much for Thank coming you. on the show. I really appreciate it. It. So I want to start with you, Anish. Why don't you tell our viewers a little bit about Dr. Reddy's? Absolutely. So Dr. Reddy's is an Indian multinational company and we are in the business of uh, providing access of affordable and innovative medicines to uh, close to 60 odd countries across the globe. Uh, this is powered by our strategy of uh, good health cannot wait. So how, how does, again, it, it's pharmaceuticals, right? And when you start to look at how you really go deeper and a lot, there's a lot of data involved yep. in getting through and getting pharmaceuticals out and all of that. Give us a, kind of an idea how you're using Informatica to really, you know, challenge, you know, that data challenge is really something you're trying to get under control. Absolutely. So as of today, Informatica happens to be a backbone of our data strategy. Uh, the way it, uh, we're using Informatica, and in particular the IDMC uh, module of Informatica, is to orchestrate the data from our golden sources, uh, integrating that with our data lake. And then on top of that, we're using the Informatica data quality module to measure and test the data to ensure it is available to the business for running various uh, scientific uh, you know, uh, experiments, uh, also for data science colleagues, and also lastly for the business to self-serve on the data requirements. Joseph, I want to bring you in here a little bit and, and to give our viewers really an overview of what you see as the changes in the pharmaceutical market and why and, and what's driving organizations like Dr. Reddy's and, and other pharmas like it to rethink their data strategy. So, it's a great question, but I think that's probably a better one for Anish, <laughs> being the expert in, in the industry. So, you know, I'd probably hand that one to Anish. Let me take that for you. Okay. Uh, so, essentially, the pharmaceutical industry as of today is undergoing a massive shift, largely driven by three key optics. Uh, the first is the evolving regulatory requirements, where the regulators as of today want a forensic analysis of the data, which is underlying the, the development of each and every drug. That's one. The second is the evolving patient requirements where the today's requirement is more around targeted and personalized medicines. Now, that can only happen if we have data points to understand the patient's or a customer needs. And the third is the digital therapeutic side where variables are trending and the ability of variables to aggregate uh, the data about an individual, about a human body is immense. Think of it if we have data points about each and every optic about um, an individual's body, whether it's temperature, pulse rate, heart rate, and there could be many other optics which can be aggregated. The ability of a pharma company to apparently design a customized or a personalized solution is immense. So, Joseph, I, I, I think we were talking beforehand yeah. and how Informatica has really partnered with Dr. Reddy's is around multiple different facets of yeah. it. And I, I think you were saying something that they were doing governance in a particular way or... Uh, it, yeah, it's, it's really quite fascinating. And so Dr. Reddy's are our largest customer in, in APJ. So they're, they're our largest customer of the, the IDMC cloud. Um, and some of the ways they're using it's really innovative, you know, and I've loved talking to Anish over the last few days, you know, learning about how they have built it really into the into the data culture and how they're KPIing a lot of their um, data stewards. And I think, you know, it's a great lesson for others to learn. So it'd be great, Anish, if you could sort of tell the audience a little bit more about that. Yeah, sure. So uh, data, Data strategy apparently is also a uh, constituent of data governance. And this is where Informatica has played a pivotal role for us to uh, really mobilize the data governance agenda. Uh, essentially, it is about data quality, it is about data access, it is about data security. Um, data quality being one of the most important essential ingredient of data governance because unless your data quality is right, there's no way you can even run a simple data science project. And more so with AI at the forefront of the strategy, uh, at the board level as well, it is important that our data quality is right. And hence, what we've done as a business is we have, we have really inculcated the spirit of data stewardship. 
I'm, I'm proud to share that as of today, we have more than 300 odd data stewards identified across the business. Now what that means is each data steward has an accountability to ensure data quality is being measured, is, is being corrected, and is being reported as well. We have embedded these optics as a part of individual scorecard and um, you know, performance goals as well, so that a right level of accountability is instilled, and data quality and governance is understood to be a joint responsibility of DNA team and the business as well. Yeah, that, that's really interesting, and I think you're right, Joseph, that this is, it's not just getting the tech right, it is really, it's, it's, it's instilling it as part of the culture and a really pi a pillar of what of what Dr. Reddy's is how it how it really approaches these these challenges. So how how do you go about that? Because I mean I think it really is a culture shift it and, it's, and it's a real change management. You can't just say, okay we're gonna we're gonna have these data stewards, problem solved. You know, yeah. you really it really is making this this feeling of accountability throughout the organization. Yeah. Yeah. What are the kinds of things that organizations need to think about as they embark on this kind kind of cultural shift? See, first and foremost, uh, we, took, we, took a, we took an approach which actually worked well for us, and that was, if I was to tell you, I can help you solve a problem which you face day to day, uh, and this is largely related to data. Uh, trust me, you will, your acceptance will be far better versus simply telling you, you know what, starting tomorrow, there's something else in addition to your core job that you will be required to do. Right, And that's what we did. We, we set up a joint consultation with all the data stewards and we, we took a step back and asked them, what, what are the chronic data issues that you face on a day-to-day -day basis which you would want us to partner with you and help you solve? And that's where it really got exciting. Uh, we had a list of almost 100 odd uh, such uh, instances or problems which they wanted us to solve for them. And when we did a double click on all these uh, problems, what we understood was these are largely the data quality related issues. And hence, uh, we wanted to make sure that it is not just about acceptance of a problem. We are also ensuring that data stewardship is not by nomination, but by qualification. What we did was we wanted to make sure data stewards have understanding of the governance framework, and we particularly designed an e-learning module for them, which they have to complete, and this e-learning module gave them a good understanding of the optics around data governance, their roles and responsibilities, what is it that they need to do on a day-to-day -day basis, what help do they have available in case they get stuck. So overall, from a change management standpoint, we wanted to make sure that we look are three key aspects. One is awareness, second is clarity, and third is motivation. So, I, I think one of the big things that when I look at pharmaceuticals, or I mean, obviously, it, they're regulated around the world. There's yeah. got to be trust in the data. How do you how do you really examine trust in the data that you're bringing? Because again, it's great to have stewards and stuff like that, and they yep. have to be responsible for that, but again, they're just doing with what they can with the data. That's, that's a good question. And in my view, trust in data is a derivative of transparency. Now, it, it, it is very easy for a data analytics team to simply go back to the business and give them and offer them a set of data. Uh, and this is where the challenge lies. What we have taken in as, an, as an approach is we instill trust by giving an information which is where the data has originated from. What is the data source? What is the quality of the data? When was the data last refreshed? So it is, it is about sharing the characteristics of the data uh, with the business. And once the business sees all these optics about data, there's definitely uh, an enhanced trust because they see the currency of the data, how current the data is, they see when was it last refreshed, and they also have ability to see where is the data source from. And last but not the least and most important optic is they know what is the quality of the data. And this is where Informatica really, really added a significant value on our overall agenda of embedding greater trust. Yeah, and Joseph, how do, you, how do you see this? Because you're seeing it more from an APJ wide perspective. How do you see this not only in the pharmaceuticals but across different industries within your, your patch there? We're certainly seeing a maturity in the market and the, the reason I love talking to Anish about this is their, their level of maturity and the advancement of their, is, is very you know, far, far along where in APJ in particular, we have these different levels. You get sort of you know, very early stage of this where people are more around the integration and then we've got really yeah. advanced customers that have you know, being able to not only build it into the culture and, and track that and build the KPIs around it, but also one of the great things that I love about Dr. Reddy's is the way that you've been able to 
calculate the value of this and, and what the return to the business is because that's that's really where a lot of organizations struggle. They really can't, they know that data is important, everyone knows data is important now, but they don't, they can't really justify that spend to their management teams. And sometimes it means, particularly around the data governance side of things, that you know they can't get those projects off the ground. And you know, it'd be great to hear from Anish around how he went about doing that and how he's he's built out that value proposition. Sure, it's an interesting one to be honest. Uh, you, you spoke about trust uh, in data. Uh, the way we looked at it was trust in platform, which is trust in Informatica in this case. Um, as opposed to defining the ROI before signing up for the platform, we knew that we will definitely see benefits. It was just about the number that we did not know how much benefit will, it, uh, will the platform deliver to us as a business. And uh, one year down the line into the implementation, uh, we took an approach where we wanted to understand what has really changed post you know, implementing Informatica. And uh, there are two key aspects that really came uh, out for us. The first was all the data pipelines which we configured on Informatica, we had the failure rate as zero. <laughs> Not even a single pipeline failed. Wow. Now what that means is... Zero is a low number, by the way. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So that's the number which normally we would not want to hear, but, yeah. but here it's a magical oh, that's number a for good, us. That's a fantastic, it's an unbelievable number. Absolutely. That's great. Yeah. So what that meant was uh, my data engineers didn't have to spend time in remediating a failed data pipeline. That's one. The second is because of the modular architecture of the platform, the overall effort required from a development perspective of any new pipeline was minimal. We were able to cut that down by 20% per engineer and extrapolate that 20% by 30 as a number, that's the number of engineers we have. And when we looked at the overall number that came, for year one, we were able to achieve Informatica as a cost-neutral investment. I will not say cost-neutral spend, it's an investment for us. Year two will be cost-positive. That means whatever we're investing in Informatica, by the way, we have signed up for additional IPUs as well. So even the additional spend, if factored in, we will still be cost positive uh, because of the savings that we will be making in terms of reduction in effort and repurposing that effort in development of new projects. There's so much excitement around the potential and the promise of, of using Gen AI in, in the pharmaceutical industry and in, in healthcare in general. I wonder if you could talk a little bit about some of the further innovations that you're working on at Dr. Reddy's and what you may be even able to announce at next year's Informatica World. <laughs> for sure, for sure. I think uh, first and foremost, uh, I'm really looking forward to next year for Informatica World because we saw an early release or, a, uh, or an announcement about Claire GPT within Informatica. That's left me super excited. So I will definitely want to come back again and talk about how we have exploited Claire GPT. Exploited. Once. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> That's the word that I would probably want to use. That's one. The second is our approach to Gen AI, uh, the way we have looked at it is we have looked at it in a three uh, a tangent, in a, as a triangle. The first is Gen AI for people. The second is Gen AI for problems, and the third is Gen AI for platforms. Now, when I say Gen AI for people, it is largely about ability of Gen AI to uh, summarize large large PDFs, uh, no, complex PDFs, uh, largely driving the productivity agenda. The second is Gen AI for problems, where we are uh, piloting few use cases for solving few of the complex problems in R&D from a pharma standpoint. Uh, smart drug formulation, as an example. Uh, smart assistant to ensure our scientists get the right assistance in identifying the right molecule for drug development. And last but not the least is Gen AI for platforms. Um, and I must mention, this is where Informatica plays a pivotal role for us. We've got a lot of enterprise digital data platforms which host a lot of model data. Think of it that we are able to deploy Gen AI on top of this model data and simply you know, let business to do self-serve and asking questions on this model data. And that's where I see a lot of benefit and uh, you know, advantage of deploying something like Claire GPT. Um, the overall development time or effort required for a data engineer will significantly come down, plus mod automating a process or probably modernizing the process using the new modules will be far more effective. Yeah, I mean, getting rid of the sticky wickets using AI, that's Correct. what I'm, I'm, you know, with the, I, you know, I had been into India multiple times in the IPL, I know it's going on right now, so it is. Yeah. get rid of all of those, that's for sure. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Well, you seem like a dream customer. <laughs> they've, yeah. they've, they've really been able to implement it and, and take the journey. Any final words of wisdom that you would say to your other customers who are, are grappling with the same challenges that, that it seems as though Dr. Reddy's has really already overcome? 
Yeah, I think it's just going beyond, you know, looking at those business challenges. Too often we look at these as IT challenges and that's what I love about the Dr. Ready approach of really understanding what does the business want, that connection and the coordination with the business and then being able to show that value back to them and, you know, that is going to build and, and they've got that foundation now for Gen AI and whatever comes next. So, you know, I think it's it's definitely business outcomes is, is what you want to be looking at and then build the technology around it. Great insight. Well, Joseph and Anish, thank you so much for coming on theCUBE. We really appreciate it. No Likewise, thank, thank you very much. Thanks thank you. Us. I am Rebecca Knight for Rob Stretch. That wraps up theCUBE's live coverage of Informatica World. It has been a terrific show. Thank you so much for tuning in and thank, thank you to the crew behind the scenes, Anderson and Christian and Andrew and Jay and Gina and Chuck and Gabe and, and Deborah. Thank you to everyone for tuning in. We will see you next time. You are watching theCUBE, the leader in enterprise tech news and analysis.